I mentioned this idea of a horticultural society, not forager, not agriculture, something kind of in between. And this was always thought of as a quick little moment, like a transition that we made between, you know, you're a hunter-gatherer, then you started to learn to domesticate crops, and then boom, you did agriculture, but there was a short little period where you were a horticultural society, you were gardeners, but you hadn't had farming yet. And that turns out, too, to be another myth. But, so what is a horticultural society? Just the word itself means plants. You're tending plants rather than creating fields. So really, you know, informally, it's gardening instead of farming. The tools are small hand tools rather than large power tools or even plows that are turning over large quantities of soil. You're working with hoes and digging sticks or smaller tools. The crops are generally mixed and they're generally on a small scale. A horticulturist might have a little patch of corn or wheat or something like that, but they're, they're growing things in polyculture for the most part. A big one here is that agriculture is the setting back of succession to the annual weed stage. That's one of the very first stages of this pattern of succession. Most land where there's enough water wants to become, enough rainfall wants to become forest. A forest ecosystem is a much more highly developed successionary phase with far more biodiversity, far more productivity, far more complexity, and agriculture sets that back to its initial stage. I mean, agriculture is clear-cutting every year, right? You clear-cut your fields to do agriculture. Whereas horticulture encourages, and we forest garden in horticulture. We grow tree crops. So that allows the ecosystems to continue to function if you are doing good horticulture. You've got biodiversity and you're welcoming it because you need those pollinators and you need those critters bringing in interesting new seeds from other places. So all of those ecosystem functions that are wiped out in agriculture can be retained when you're doing horticulture. And horticultural societies tend to have much less hierarchy in them. When they've analyzed them, usually the the chief or the big man, as the anthropologists call it, which is an interesting phrase, but so in, in horticultural and forager societies, the, the head person is very accessible and they tend to rule through charisma and personal force rather than through having a staff and a military around to keep everybody at bay. A lot of people doing permaculture are doing this conscious or unconscious movement toward a horticultural society rather than an agricultural society. So I think I've made the point fairly well that culture does not necessarily require agriculture. And one of the groundbreaking pieces, very controversial piece of work done in the 1960s was an article called The Original Affluent Society by Marshall Salins. Still pretty controversial, but he was one of the first ones to point out that horticulturalists and foragers work a lot less than farmers. They work three or four hours a day, and then they hang around and talk for the rest of the day. <laughs> Sounds okay to me. They have art and music and all of these things that we consider part of a high, you know, a high culture, highly developed community, rituals, all of that. So you don't need agriculture to have culture. So this would be you know, a society where ecosystems get to function rather than us converting ecosystems into us. So how do we do that? You know, what does that look like? How can we begin to make this transition 